Have you ever wondered how you could wake up a brain organoid? Yes, the brain organoids, the tiny human brains that you can grow in a literal jar if you want to from human stem cells. They are in a permanent sleep-like state, so similar to what we see in humans with delta brainwaves. Delta being what you would expect for someone who is sleeping or otherwise in a coma, but they do have other brainwaves, so some researchers decided to see what would happen if we woke them up. Now, it is important to note that this research group did not use a thalamus organoid, and yes, you can make one. You can even connect a thalamus organoid to a cortex organoid. Now, it's important to note that the thalamus is part of your brain that's responsible for wakefulness or consciousness in the medical term. It's also a sensory relay organ, so it goes through your thalamus and then is spread to other parts of your brain. Your cortex is typically what we think of with conscious thought. The cortex is the outer area of the brain, and it's responsible for higher order thinking. A lot of the brain organoids that we see that are doing things like playing Pong or operating robots are cortex organoids, but there's no reason that you have to stay with cortex. In the case of waking them up, they gave them hormones that would normally wake people up, things that are associated with that state, and yes, they did have brain waves that were more associated with a conscious state. And after 24 hours, they went back to a sleep-like state. Yes, your brain needs to sleep. The individual cells need to sleep. They can't keep firing forever. What this study did not do is pop them into a video game and see how well they played in a wakeful state versus a sleep state. And yes, it seems to be similar to what we think of with REM sleep, but it is not REM sleep because they don't have eyes for starters. Well, some of them have eyes. It's just not as complex as we would think of in a adult human brain. Oh, but this group connected a thalamus to a cortex organoid and it worked. Now, the specific reason that they would want to do this is to study development. Yes, we have studied development in mice, but you can't really watch a human brain develop and see how the different parts interact with each other unless it's outside a skull and you grow it in a jar. Okay, it's usually done in a petri dish or right over an electrode. But you can grow them in a jar, and that's what matters to me, at least. What you are looking at is different lobes of a brain organoid. Now, what they found is that if you grow the fetal version of a brain in a petri dish and you add the thalamus, the thalamus actually directs the growth of the cortex. With both, they actually develop more quickly and develop into being more mature. Typically, the transcriptome, so the kinds of proteins that the brain organoid will make, does match very closely to the gestational age of a human. And then if you grow them beyond that point to a year or five years, the protein signatures will match, say, a five-year-old child after five years, but they do remain rather basic and tiny, a few millimeters of grass. Now, what researchers are really doing with assembloids is not quite as spooky as it actually sounds. They're trying to make a model for a person so that it can be studied. Okay, that didn't help, did it? That still sounds creepy. Essentially, it's an alternative to using lab animals or people and allows us to have a really good view into early development or even the study of diseases without ever having to use a person. You can also carefully change conditions, whereas if you're doing a study group, yeah, you gotta care about people. Now, this is the point where I'm going to get a little bit more serious because there are very real concerns about the ethics of experimenting on brain organoids if we make them increasingly complex or if they have the capacity to feel pain, which, you know, these assemblies did. I covered these guys before. Now, these guys actually did give them pain, a sensory experience. They gave them the ability to sense the heat from pepper, so capsaicin receptors. But as may seem obvious, if we give them the capacity to have sensory relay through a thalamus and we give them the capacity to have sensation, those two things can be combined. We can create increasingly complex brain organoids that, yeah, also could run robots, which has been done. But that early research done in brain organoids controlling robots like our spider robot friend, it's done with ordered and disordered signals because brain organoids prefer order and they don't like disorder. But we could give them actual sensation using carbon fibers that can translate light directly into electrical signals which could interface with our brain organoid and give them a true sensory experience with having a thalamus. And yes, you can give them a organoid spinal cord. But again, this is more the mad science of this kind of stuff, and I do love it, but it's not the main focus. The main focus is medical research and understanding development. But main focus does not mean the only focus, because I really want to see what happens. I know it's not morally great, and I'm not even entirely sure why it's not morally great, but it does feel wrong. Either way, I will not look away. I will continue to watch with horrified fascination. Follow for more.